Hi, welcome to 90% Knitting. This is episode 286 and I'm Lisa, also known as Fiber Nymph. I will put my screen in here so that you can see all the ways to find me on social media and such and things. Okay, so how are you? Today is Thursday, the 28th. I think it's the 28th. <laughs> Um, yeah, June 28th. So it's been almost a week. I think I recorded Friday last week, but <clears throat> today's the day I have a chance to record today. Plus, I put makeup on this morning for you guys. <laughs> and then I got sidetracked because I had to like take care of a whole bunch of phone calls. And I thought, oh, maybe I should just wait and record tomorrow. But it's like, I already had makeup on and I really did not want to waste the effort. I even put like foundation on today. I don't usually. <laughs> Actually, okay, that's kind of a lie. I never wear foundation and I don't have it on today either, but I have um, tinted moisturizer that's like, I don't know, 10 years old probably. <laughs> I put that on because I've noticed as I'm processing the, the videos that I look really washed out sometimes and I'm not a huge makeup wearer to begin with. I don't wear a lot of makeup. In fact, I was gonna put lipstick on too and then I totally forgot, so I'm sorry. <laughs> You're getting me without lipstick or anything. But anyway, <laughs> I at least have makeup on and hopefully I don't look just pale and white today. It's also sort of gloomy today. So the fact that it's not super, super bright in all these windows probably helps. I have color. <laughs> you guys probably think, oh my gosh, get out in the sun once in a while or something. <laughs> I have a broken nail. Oh my gosh. This is exactly what you want to hear. I'm going to whine about all these little petty things right now. I just caught it on something though. That's why I noticed it. All right, <laughs> let's continue. Um, let's see, just to let you know, thank you so much for all of your kind messages and um, concern after I recorded last week and was telling you about my crazy vertigo incident. Um, my head's still congested, like not stuffy congested, but I like full. My ears are still full. I'm pretty much done with the antibiotic that they gave me. I don't think it did anything. I tried making a doctor's appointment the other day at my regular doctor and I called and they're like, we don't have any openings for over a week. I'm like, are you serious? I'm like, I've been dizzy. I've been, well, we could try to maybe squeeze you in if you call tomorrow. I'm like, and then, as it turned out, later that day, I felt perfectly fine. Like, I was not dizzy at all. I was like, oh, excellent. Whatever it was, passed. I'm so glad. The next morning, I felt pretty good. And then, yesterday afternoon, it all started up again. But it was like this. The weather was really weird. And I know it was, um, there's a lot of, like, I have a lot of sinus pressure in general that happens a lot whenever the weather changes and, you know, the barometric pressure or whatever. Um, I know some people think that's crazy and that doesn't really have anything to do with headaches and sinus stuff and everything, but I will vigorously disagree with them because I've dealt with that stuff for years. So I don't know. It's just ongoing, but I'm functioning and, you know, it's not like I'm laid up in bed or anything, but I probably will still try to make a doctor's appointment um, soon if it doesn't completely go away, just because it's kind of annoying. So we'll see how that goes. Fingers crossed it just goes away because I don't have time to go to the doctor. <sighs> Women always say that, don't they? I don't have time to go to the doctor, but we take our kids to the doctors and we want our spouses to go to the doctors. We always put ourselves last. That's wrong. We shouldn't do that. Take care of yourselves, ladies. It's important. You can't knit if you're not healthy. Okay, that went way far off the grid. <laughs> of what I was going to talk about. Look, I have a different mug this week. It's not my monster mug. Isn't that exciting? I told you I use other mugs. Um, oh, the other thing I wanted to bring to your attention, and I will talk about this a little bit more later, but um, if you watch your YouTube feed or your Instagram, not Instagram, your, well, it was on Instagram too, um, iTunes <laughs> feed. I don't even know if iTunes has a feed. I don't use iTunes. Um, however, I did post a video yesterday and it was just a very short, under 15 minutes video introducing this year's holiday countdown mini collection. 
um, which is being called A Merry Month of Minis. So I will tell you a little bit more about that at the end of the podcast in the shop segment, but I just wanted to let you know that video is out there. Excuse me. If you are interested in watching that, um, if you're interested in getting one of those holiday sets this year, last year they went over really great and I'm looking forward to doing them again. Um, I would say that I'm going to put like a little clicky thing up here, but I said that last week and I tried to do it, but apparently they don't let you do annotations on YouTube anymore. That's what those little boxes were called that you could click. They said, oh, they weren't really that effective. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> so apparently videos that are up already that did have them before they did away with them, they're still there, but new videos can't put them up. You can put other things up, but they like took up a whole big part of the screen or they were there the entire video. And neither of those things were what I wanted. So I'll just link it in the drop down and in the show notes and hopefully you'll find it. That's the best we're gonna do with that. <laughs> Let's get into the knitting. All right, so first up is my Around the Bend shawl, which I had really hoped would be finished to show you this week, but as I feared would be the case, I did run out of yarn. <laughs> yeah, I didn't weigh my yarn when I first started the project, and so I was, I weighed it a little further in, and I was sort of guesstimating, and it, it didn't work. So I did run out of the one strand because I'm holding two strands to do this project. Um, let's see, where's the front? Here it is. But I am almost done. This is all the farther I have to go and I'm, you know, on the last decrease section. So it doesn't have that much further to go. And I do have, this is how much I have left of the one ball. Um, I tried to make do by using some little mini hand spun skeins that I have because a lot of times when I do my hand spun and I ply, um, if I have something left over on one of the bobbins when I'm done plying, I will three ply that, you know, I'll Navajo ply it just to use up all of the singles. So I had a whole bunch of those around and I thought, well, I could just use those, you know, make use of those little scraps. So I did do several rows that way and then I didn't really like how it was turning out because the colors were very different than how I did the colors in all of these fiber minis from last year. So it didn't quite look right. And then the other thing I realized was a lot of those minis that I had pulled out of my stash, those aren't fibers that I dyed. And they were, you know, other fibers that I've spun, but they weren't ones I had dyed. And this whole thing is stuff that I dyed and I kind of want it to be that way. So I tore out what I had done using those other minis and then I um, spun up some more. <laughs> so I actually did have a few more leftover ends of the um, holiday mini fiber um, from last year. So I spun those and then this yellow was actually something completely different. But every once in a while when I dye fiber, I end up with just little boops of fiber that are apart from any, you know, any segment that'll be in a braid that I sell. So I just kind of stashed those. So I pulled that yellow out from that and spun that with this. So it is a fiber that I dyed and I spun and it's, you know, I did do the Navajo plying it. So it's three plied and I soaked it. So it's ready to go. Um, I just brought it up from drying this morning. I just didn't have time to work on it this morning. So I'm really, really hopeful. I think this was about another 80 yards. Um, so I'm very hopeful that this will get me through the end of this. Fingers crossed. If not, I'll spin some more. It's not a big deal. I would just like to finish this project because I'm really excited about it. Um, but here it is. I cannot remember where I was last week when I showed it to you. Um, but I don't think I had done the bind off part yet. So here it is from the beginning. It's super long. So started here, increases on both sides, and then you get to a certain point where you stop increasing on both sides, and <laughs> where is that point? Mm -hmm. Right about here. So here is where I did this bind off of half the stitches, and now I'm just working the remainder Sorry, I had to turn my notes back on. I'm working the remainder on the other half of the stitches. So it will be an elongate, a really elongated triangle and asymmetric. 
Um, it'll just be really cool though. I, I love this pattern. I could, I think I could knit this multiple times. It's been so much fun to do. Very easy, mostly mindless once you figure out, you know, once you remember the, the four rows, um, in the pattern it's just it's so much fun and it's an excellent way to use hand spun I think it's turning out great so anyway hopefully next week this will be done when I show it to you next um, but this is the around the bend shawl by Nim Teasdale on Ravelry it is a paid for pattern but very 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 enjoyable so that is the first project I don't have any finished projects this week I do have a hoe though, so I'll show you that next. Um, pretty much the only other project I worked on this week was this project and that's my daughter's birthday socks. Um, this, this one has not seen any more work, it's still where it was last week. This one though I finished, um, I finished the sock basically except for the heel. I'll be doing the heels at the end because I'm going to use the reverse yarn. So this yarn will be the heel for this one and vice versa. So these are inversibles and these are on my um, my Fiber Nymph Dye Works Bedazzle base. So it's got the sparkle in it, silver sparkle. And this was the Aqua Shock and Magenta color combination. So this one is largely Aqua Shock and this one is largely Magenta. They match up pretty well stripe wise. I'm pretty impressed. I'm always impressed with myself when I manage to get stripes to match up. Um, so yeah, not really anything too exciting to tell you other than the fact that this one is done, just needs the heel. Um, this one, I think I have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I have eleven of the small stripes. I need to have thirteen of them. And then I will start the toe decreases shortly after the thirteenth small stripe. So conceivably these could be done by next week too depending on how much time I put into them we'll see <laughs> these aren't like a rush her birthday's not till August I'm I'm playing with the idea of maybe giving them to her when I see her in July because she'll be at my mom's wedding um, so it's always fun to give hand knits in person I think rather than putting them in the mail so I may give them to her as an early birthday present we'll see I don't know my mom's birthday is also in August I was actually just a few days apart from my daughter's so I may end up taking those pool noodle socks down and giving them to my mom while I'm there as well we'll have to see I don't know I haven't thought that far as far as I'm concerned even though that wedding's like only a little over three weeks away it's like I need to focus on other things first Ugh. then I can think about the wedding <laughs> um, all right let's move on I did cast on another project ish but it's related to something else I'm going to talk about in a little while, so I'll just hold off on that for right now. Um, with regard to spinning, I didn't actually spin anything else other than this that I showed you already. However, I did soak those three samples of the fleece that I showed you last week. Um, so I, I already had them spun and I wanted to soak them and see how they bloomed. So this is Bunny. Um, she is the yearling three quarters BFL, one quarter Gotland, the, the fleece that I bought earlier, one of the fleeces I bought earlier this year. So as I showed you last week, I sampled them by processing them three different ways. So this was the one that I had flick carded and then spun and, and Navajo plied, chain plied. So I did the same plying on all of them. They're all three plied. I'm trying to get this to focus, but I don't know. It wants to focus on everything behind me. Anyway, um, yeah, so this was the one that was flick carded and woolen spun for the most part. Um, this is the one that I combed, and this is all from the same sheep. I love that there's so many different colors in this fleece. Um, this one I combed and um, that gave me a worsted prep, so I spun it worsted. Um, and I like it. It turned out nice. It's not as fluffy as the one that was woolen spun, but that's to be expected also because of the prep. And then this is the last one. This is the one that I tried to do with hand cards, and it just did not want to card well. I had a lot of waste doing that one, and I spun it 
semi-woolen. Um, I actually like how this one looks kind of better than the other two, I think. It's neater and it's still fluffy, but I am not hand carding this whole fleece. It just didn't want to be hand carded. Part of it may be the fact that, like I said, I did not scour this fleece. Um, the woman who sold it to me had already rinsed it a few times. It feels quite clean. And even when I was spinning it, I did not have that greasy feeling I've had on my fingers from other fleeces that have not been adequately scoured or I have tried spinning in the grease a few times. I did not have that feeling at all. So I don't know if it's just there's enough residual grease left in it that I'm not detecting it but it's making it hard to card or if it's just that this fiber does not want to be carded. I don't know but I'm not going to card it. I think I'm going to go ahead and comb um, this fiber in order to spin it. I really like that prep. I like combing. I like being able to pull off um, the fiber off of the combs and create like a top. Um, that just, it's pleasing to me. I enjoy that process. So I think that's what I'll do. I, I, I enjoyed the flick carding and I think that's a really fun prep for if you're just kind of prepping as you go about spinning because you can just pull it out, flick it a little bit, spin it, and you don't have to do it in advance. Whereas the combing really, it pays to sit and have a session of combing a bunch of fiber, then you'll have it ready to spin because it's a little bit more involved and you don't want to be picking up and setting down your combs a lot just because they're so pointy and dangerous. <laughs> so I think that's what I've decided. So I'm going to work on starting to prep Bunny with the um, combs and then I will spin that during Tour de Fleece or during July uh, because we're doing our unofficial Tour de Fleece spin along through the whole entire month of July. So I can start early. <laughs> Um, but that's it. That's really the only thing spinning I was able to do this week. Um, so let's move on to cows. <laughs> we're just flying right along today. Um, we're still in the May, June, everybody else's cow cow. Just a couple more days because that ends at the end of June. So when I record next time, I will announce the prize winners for the June people who have participated. Um, all you have to do to participate is participate in the thread on the 90% knitting group on Ravelry. Um, there's just one thread um, so you can post your chatter there, your in-progress pictures, any finished object pictures you have. Um, the only guideline is that it has to have been a project that you did during the month of May and June that also qualified for somebody else's knit along, crochet along, craft along, whatever along. Um, that I can verify that by going to a group on Ravelry. Um, the, the rules have to be available somewhere on Ravelry just so that I can verify that your projects qualified based on that parameter. So um, yeah, so that is that one. And as far as my participation in those, I had said, I, you know, I don't often participate in my own knit alongs for whatever reason, but I am sort of participating in the fact that I am doing the, um, uh, this isn't really a knit along, but it's something that Sarah Pomegranate is doing. I mentioned it last week. She is helping to collect hats and mittens and scarves and warm things for cold weather um, that will be given to homeless people in New Jersey. Um, through one of her students who is doing working on their gold award for Girl Scouts. Um, so I did in fact, I finished that hat that I showed you last week. I did in fact find the rest of all of my charity hats that I have knit in you know last several months. Um, I went through the office and other boxes this week and I found those. And I have a whole bunch of other just items that I've knit over the years that I, I did not knit them to wear. They were either samples that I knit for the shop and I don't use them as sh um, show samples anymore or they were some, I, some were test knits that I've done over the years and then never actually wore the items. So I'm going to send a box of donations to Sarah for that purpose and I think that that'll be good. Those things can be used um, in that way. Then the other one that I'm participating in, and this one will continue through July, even though our knit along is over. I told you I wanted to take part in the Downseller Studio Splash Pad Party 
um, specifically the X Games um, part of it. So I read this to you already. I'm not going to read it again this week. You can go to um, the Down Cellar Studio podcast group and see all the details about this if you're interested. But basically it's a list of eight things um, to take part in. It's a challenge. And they're all real pretty easy. I mean, because you can make them as big or as small as you want to. Um, but essentially, all of them can be one single item except number seven, which involves knitting eight or yeah, knitting eighteen of something or crocheting. I think you can do either of those. Um, but it can be something small. So yeah, there's no yardage requirement for these particular items. So what I decided to do for my 18 items. This is so crazy. <laughs> I wanted to use up scraps. Like I have a lot of just leftover sock yarn that's like this size, really quite small. And so I pulled out a whole bunch of that and I decided that I was going to knit up 18. I may end up doing more to do what I actually want to do with them, but at least 18 um, mini mitered squares. <clears throat> Excuse me, froggy today. So I started out with US 1 needles and cast on 12 stitches and did a mitered square that is so itty bitty and tiny, it's ridiculous. <laughs> I, I thought, uh, no, that's a little too tiny. So I tried again and I went up to US 3s and I cast on 16 stitches and I got this size. And this is much better. So this is what I'm doing. So just as a comparison, this is like so super tiny. Could you imagine making an entire blanket out of this? It would take bazillions of these. Oh my gosh. It's less than an inch square. What's the matter, Muff? What's wrong? Why are you pacing? I don't know why my dog's being goofy, but I'm not letting you out right now. Sorry. And don't knock over the camera. Anyway, so I um, I did these just this morning, actually, and I did four of them. There's three. Where's the fourth one? Oh, there it is. So here we go. I have four of the 18 knit up. They take no time whatsoever. <laughs> um, and they're really fun. I love mitered squares, and doing these little tiny ones super fast just is amazing. Um, my plan, and I don't know how this will work, is I want to connect them, but I want to connect them like diamonds. So like points like this. Okay, so you get the idea. So there will be spaces in between. And I want to make a square. And then I thought that would make a really cool like cover for over top of a small pillow. Don't ask me what I'll do with the pillow, but I just thought that would be, that could be kind of cool. I don't know. It's just a weird idea I had. So that's what I'm going to do, but I think that would take like 25 of them in order to do that because 18 won't give me a square, but I'm going to do 18 for this particular component of the X Games. Okay, Muff, I don't know what you want. Okay, I'm back. That was really weird. My dog never asks to be let outside. So when she does that, like she goes to the door and whines, it's really bizarre. She just, she has never done that. So I let her out <laughs> to go to the bathroom, like outside, outside, obviously, because this is just our dining room. Um, and now she won't come back in. She's like, I'm hanging out out here, which means in like two minutes, she'll be at the front door barking, but she can wait out there for a little bit or she can come in the basement. She knows how to come in down there. Oh my goodness. Anyway, sorry about that distraction. <laughs> Dogs. Okay, so that is the one thing that I'm doing for the Splash Pad Party X Games. The other thing I'm going to do is probably a bunch of um, washcloths um, because I like knitted washcloths. Plus, in the process of rearranging and moving stuff and unpacking things this week, I came upon my huge stash of cotton <laughs> yarn that I knew I had. I just didn't realize I had quite as much as I do. So the first thing on the Splash Pad Party list is um, the pool, which is knitting something with cool colors. So I pulled out this cotton, which is all nice and blues, and I'm going to do a dishcloth out of that. Um, number eight is also um, 
something regarding make something bath or shower related. So I may just end up making a second washcloth out of this because um, you have to, it can't double dip with the same item, but I can make two of the same thing. Um, and then actually number two is the cabana where it says to knit something out of um, warm colors. And I have some cotton in red. So I may just do another dishcloth that way. Sorry, I'm dropping things. Okay. So that is my progress on the X Games, <laughs> such as it is. They're fun though, they're little projects and I think they'll be fun. Um, okay, so then July, as I said before, is going to be, the whole entire month will be our unofficial Tour de Fleece spin along, which I'm really looking forward to because I'm really looking forward to working with my fleece sitting over there, that's why I keep looking over there. Um, I think that'll be a lot of fun and I've, um, I've started a thread in the 90% knitting group, so please join in and let us know if you're going to be spinning, what you might be spinning, um, are you going to work on a fleece, do you have a fleece to work on, um, yeah, whatever, just, just tell us what you're going to be spinning, and if you are spinning on an official Tour de Fleece team, feel free to, you know, double post, you can post in that group, you can post in our group too. I just would love to have you spin along with us. So, and I will be updating you guys with my progress with Bunny the Sheep. <laughs> um, let's see, new things. Let's move on to new things. I do actually have some new things to show you this week. And let me see if I can find them all here. No, oh, that's interesting. Um, I decided to order some stitch markers. It was basic. it was an impulse thing, I gotta say. However, these were stitch markers I'd kind of been looking at for a while, or at least this particular shop. Um, but I was just feeling like I needed to buy myself a treat <laughs> the other day, and so I did. Um, if you watch the um, Knitting Samurai and Her Guys podcast, um, which is done by Steph, who is the Knitting Samurai, She's been podcasting for quite some time, um, but she's just kind of started back up at it um, in recent months. Um, but she's also started an Etsy shop for stitch markers. And I keep seeing her stitch markers different places and I've been to her shop a few times and they're so cute. And she's got such a huge variety of different themes of stitch markers and such. Um, I had to buy some. <laughs> and so I ended up buying three different sets um, that include like really fun, well how about if I just show them to you? I don't know why I'm trying to describe them, they're sitting right here in my hand. Um, anyway, okay, so the first set is actually one of her um, Splash Pad Party exclusive sets. So these are ones that she's doing for the Dial & Cellar Studio event. And um, so the markers are, they're the little ring markers which I'm not going to take those out, but these are silver ring markers with um, different colored beads, yellow and blue and some purple. They're really pretty. And so then it has a lobster claw like progress keeper, or you could use it as a, a pool on something, you know, but it's a flip flop. Isn't it adorable? And I wish I could get these things to focus better, but it is super cute. Here, focus on the flip flop. Flip -flop. There we go. So that's the lobster claw, and then there's another marker in here that is like a beginning of round marker, and it is, oh, it's also um, on a lobster claw. I don't know why I didn't notice that. Um, it's an anchor, so sort of like the little nautical theme going on there. So that's one set that I bought, and I thought that was fun. Summary. I love flip-flops. I need to get some new flip-flops. Not that that's at all related to anything knitting, but I really need some new flip-flops this year. I'll have to get them before I go down to Florida so I can have some fun flip-flops for the beach. Okay, then this, the next set of stitch markers I bought. Okay, I just dumped them all out in my hand. Um, hang on. This was a Lord of the Rings and Hobbit sort of themed set. And if you know me, you know I love the Lord of the Rings, movies and books, um, and I, I love The Hobbit too, but I've, I've read and watched The Lord of the Rings more than The Hobbit. But anyway, so this is what the little ring markers look like. So they're silver also, but they have white and black and gray um, beads on them. 
Okay, so the one marker, which is like a beginning around marker, is a tree. An entish tree, she said. So there you go. And I love trees. It almost kind of reminds me of a tree of life sort of tree. Or it could be the tree of um, the tree of the king in, um, you know, in the third. Yeah, okay. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> in Gondor. Okay. Um, lastly is this one. It's a hobbit hole on a lobster claw clasp. But check it out. It opens. You can open the hobbit hole door. Isn't that great? You could actually like put a little picture in there if you wanted, like a locket, I think. I just thought that was the most adorable thing ever. I often dream of having my own hobbit hole. I think having a hobbit hole to live in, or even just to stay in occasionally, would be so much fun. You know, people have she sheds. I would like a she hobbit hole where I could just go and craft and spin and whatever. Just my own little hole underground away from all the people because when it gets too peopley, you know, nobody wants that. Even the hobbits like to stay by themselves. <laughs> anyway, okay, the last set that I got, I'm all over the place. Um, these are so pretty, oh my goodness. All right, so let me put, I'm dumping them out because they're easier for me to get the other markers out of, but then I can't show you the little ones. These are so super pretty. Um, okay, so these are the ring markers for this set. And these are on like a, an antique, bronzy, brassy kind of color. And the markers, the beads are like green and yellow and orange and red. And there's a darker one there. Really pretty. Then there's this one, which is the beginning of round marker. And it's just a little flower that says handmade on it. You're probably not going to be able to see that, but... There's that, and then the lobster claw one has a sunflower. I love sunflowers. They're my favorite flower. So I got the sunflower, and it's got a little leaf dangling on it too. So they are just so super cute, and I cannot wait to start using them on my projects. I have so many wonderful stitch markers. I will never have enough projects to use them on. Maybe that just means I have to keep casting on projects, possibly. Anyway, in addition to these three that I ordered, I also ordered just some plain ring sets because um, I use ring markers whenever I'm reskeining um, pie colorway yarns and I tie a ring marker onto the beginning of the pie sequence. And I try to make my own for that purpose, but sometimes I get behind. Then I end up having to steal markers from my own personal stash. So I just ordered a bunch from Steph since then, you know, I'm giving her business and I don't have to make them because I really don't enjoy making them to tell you the truth. Um, anyway, she included a couple more sets in the package for you guys for giveaways. And I was so thrilled by that because that was so sweet of her. Um, the one, okay, I'm going to show them to you in the package first. They're pink markers with little green beads. And then the one is a, whoops, <laughs> is a lily pad that says, I kiss frogs. <laughs> which is so cute. And then the other one, which is like a beginning of round marker, <laughs> the little ring markers get all tangled, um, is a frog. <laughs> Isn't that cute? So that will be a prize for something coming up. I'm going to save that. Maybe that will, whoops, I think I dropped something. Um, that will be one of the prizes probably for the, um, the, May, June, everybody else's knit along, knit along. One of these sets will be anyway. Um, and then the other set that she sent is also quite summery. And they have green, they're green uh, rings with different colored mar uh, beads on them. And both of the markers, both the lobster claw and the beginning of round one has a bicycle on it, which is so cute. So anyway, thank you so much, Steph, for sending those, and I am sure a couple of my viewers will also be thanking you once they win them. So anyway, really happy with those. 
In addition to those two sets, she also gave me a coupon code to share with you guys um, to get 25% off anything in her shop, which is so generous. So the coupon code is 90knitting, I think. <laughs> Wait, I should double check that before I tell you things. Yes, 90, the number 90knitting, all run together, small letters, and that's for 25% off. Um, I do not know what the expiration date on that is. I did ask her. I just haven't heard back yet. So, or actually she may have replied and I just haven't seen it yet. I will put that in the show notes once I know, but hop on over to her shop. Again, it's Adore Knit, um, A-D-O-R-E-K-N-I-T, the A and the K are capitalized, um, on Etsy and you'll find so many cute, she's got like TARDIS stuff and Star Trek and you know, holidays and just, there are so many different varieties of stitch markers she's got in there. So please check those out and, um, tell her I sent ya. <laughs> All right. Um, another thing I wanted to let you know, which is sort of new, it's not really a thing, um, is something that I did while I was away at TNNA, as I told you last week, um, Sarah from, uh, well, she's PA Nitwit on Ravelry, and she also has a podcast that she does with Anna Sylvester called Behind the Wool. It's an audio podcast. Anyway, Sarah and I went to TNNA together, and while we were there, we had some downtime, and we did an interview. She interviewed me for an episode of her podcast. So Anna was not there, so Sarah was interviewing me solo. Um, but that was super fun, and she just put that up this morning. So it is now up there and live, and I listened to it without cringing. Sometimes I cringe when I hear myself on other podcasts. I don't know what. Sometimes I cringe when I'm editing this podcast. I think, oh my gosh. <laughs> but no, it was so much fun, and um, it was really, it was nice talking to Sarah. So I will link that in the show notes as well if you'd like to go listen to that. And honestly, just listen to their episodes. They're really in, I've mentioned the podcast before. I was actually a little bit behind. I had two podcasts of theirs that I hadn't listened to until this week. Um, just so informative. And the one was on, you know, designing and different elements of being a designer. And then one was sort of a Q&A kind of podcast that they, again, had just wonderful information on. So please check that out. And if you want to hear more of me talking, at least you don't have to watch me. I could have been without makeup on that day too, although I, I did have makeup on. <laughs> um, okay, let's see. Lastly, it this if for the 90% is the Summer of Me update. I realize this might be a little boring for you guys, but I'm asking your patience because this sort of keeps me accountable to me if I have to, if I feel like I need to check in and let you guys know how I'm doing on things. And I did actually make some progress on things this past week. Um, number one was unpack and organize because as you know, there's still a lot of stuff in the house that needs to be unpacked and you can't really see it from here, but I made a huge dent in the unpacking. I unpacked a lot of stuff from our office we can actually get through now. Um, it looked like we were building a wall of boxes at one point to separate our halves of the office, my husband and I, but that wasn't the case. So those boxes are gone. I took three boxes of knitting books, like really good condition knitting books that I've purchased over the years, mostly in my earlier knitting days. I bought a lot of books and I don't tend to use them. So I took three boxes and donated them to the local library, which was wonderful to get them out of here. And they seem very excited to have them. So that's awesome. Um, and then I moved, I had two bookcases, a tall red bookcase and a shorter red bookcase that I used to use in my dining room at my house as like a china cabinet and then like a curio kind of thing. We don't have that need here, but I took them and I moved them into the back bedroom, which is sort of this, well, it's technically the spare room, but it does not have a bed in it. Um, it will someday, but right now it has all of my yarn. It's where my yarn cubbies are, and it's where I pack orders, and it has two big Bowflex machines in it that were my husband's, <laughs> are my husband's, um, and it's also the room that we just threw a whole ton of stuff in because we didn't have anywhere else to go with it. So I went in there the other day and I pulled so much stuff out of there and cleaned. I was able to unearth um, all of my boxes of my D-stash yarn. So I'm going to finally start um, doing that. I know I've been talking about it for months. Oh, sorry. I keep dropping my note. Um, but I set up a 
specific Instagram account that I'm going to use for destashing. It's Fibernymph Destash, all run together, small letters. So that when I start doing my destashes, that's where I'm going to post destash stuff. It'll be on Instagram. So Fibernymph Destash, if you want to um, follow that that account. Nothing is on there right now. I just started it the other day, but I'm going to start putting things up there. And all the information about what I'm destashing will be on each individual post. Um, anyway, so I have all that out of there, but I moved those two bookcases in there and I was able to get rid of my metal wire cubbies that I used to keep all the shop yarn in. So now all the shop yarn is housed in this lovely big red bookcase. Um, which is really exciting because it looks so much happier there, frankly. And then the other one, the smaller one, I'm using for my old computer, my desktop, um, which I just sort of have set up temporarily because I have a lot of files on there that I need to get off of there and put on my new computer. I just haven't had a chance to do that yet. And that one is not connected to the internet, so I kind of have to do it like with flash drives and stuff. So, yeah, that is... That was a huge dent, and then I also emptied a ton of boxes from, I keep pointing over here, you can't really see the living room, actually right here, you can see a laundry basket. That does have stuff in it that still needs to be emptied, but it's just kind of sitting there waiting for my attention. But yeah, so I feel really good about the progress that I have made um, with some unpacking this week. It really needed to happen. <laughs> um, number two, processing fleeces. Again, I will be working on that one fleece throughout July. Um, sewing clothes, I have not yet done any of that. I want to, I just haven't had a chance because that's not something you can kind of get out and leave out. I, ha I don't have anywhere to leave it out. I have to like commit to a large block of time to work on it. I really would actually like to make one top that I could possibly wear to my mom's wedding. I have no idea what I'm wearing to my mother's wedding yet. No clue. <laughs> and I had the briefest of thoughts of like, I could knit myself something no, Lisa, you can't. It's in three weeks. Stop it. <laughs> but I could possibly sew myself something. So we'll see if I manage to do that. Um, my loom, I have not rewarped it yet. I was going to try to do that the other day and then did not have a chance because my husband wanted to do other things like talk about our vacation that's coming up this fall, which I, I can tell you a little bit about that in a minute. But I have, I, I'm going to rewarp the loom here soon. Um, I have not gotten around to doing any more natural dyeing attempts. I have not biked or kayaked or done anything to uh, major moving wise between not feeling quite up to par and just being busy. Um, although I feel like all the stuff I moved the other day kind of should count as some sort of activity. <laughs> it's also been raining a good bit. This has not been a, a good week for being out to do anything outside. My potted garden, which you can kind of see through the trees, is doing well. I went out and checked. I've got little baby tomatoes on a couple of my tomato plants and my pepper plants have flowers on them and my squash plant actually had huge flowers on it the other day. It's not vining and I'm wondering if maybe it's one of those like mound squash plants that won't vine. If that's the case that would be wonderful because I was wondering how that was going to work with the, the potted version. <laughs> so we'll see. My herbs are not doing spectacular but I don't know. I'll keep at them. And lastly, as far as taking me time out, I really haven't done much of anything other than what I've done at home here as far as, you know, spinning and knitting and things like that. I haven't gone to any local historical sites like I would like to do. Still holding out hope that I'll be able to schedule that in. But right now, um, with this trip coming up in a few weeks to Florida, and a show before that and a bunch of wholesale stuff I have to get out by the end of July. I'm just not sure how much free time I'm going to be able to take. That's going to be a challenge. Um, but it's one I really probably should try to do so that I can get some balance. Because that's what this whole Summer of Me thing was about. It was about getting some balance. Um, I did put my scobies into their sweet tea. So they are brewing, I guess. Or whatever. I guess it's called brewing fermenting. Um, hopefully I didn't screw them up. I, the one is doing well. I put it in a green tea. Um, tea. The other one I used a non-caffeinated just herbal tea, which I did read that you can do, um, but you can't do it all the time with the same SCOBY because they do actually need the nutrients from the tea um, to 
stay healthy, the SCOBYs. So I don't know, maybe that wasn't the best choice the first time I used the SCOBY, but I'm giving it a shot, we'll see. I did test it the other day and it does not taste at all ready. <laughs> so we're gonna leave it, just sit and do its thing for a while longer and then I'll try it again in a few days. But um, yeah, so far I don't think I killed them. They're floating on top like they're supposed to, so we'll see. Um, as far as our vacation this fall, this is obviously getting into 10% now. I told you several weeks ago that my husband and I are planning to take a motorcycle trip um, out to Arizona where his sister lives and then we were going to go up the California coast, up into Oregon and then cut back across the United States to come home. That was the plan. Well, we finally sat down and started looking at maps and you know, figuring out mileage and timing and for him his big thing is how long he thinks I can actually ride. A motorcycle in a single day which is not a bad thing to think about because this is all new to me so after looking at it and calculating distances and knowing how far I can drive a car by myself in a day and figuring I probably can't do it on a motorcycle any longer than that um, we decided that the 19 days that we have set aside for this trip will not be long enough to do that entire big route across the country and back that we had originally thought we could do, or that I really, really wanted to do. Which is a bummer, because we've had to cut big chunks out that we won't be able to do now. Unfortunately, we will not be getting to California this trip. I'm sad, I'm really, really sad. I have never been to California. I've never been to the West Coast, and I really wanna get there. And I keep feeling like, I'm getting too old, I'm not gonna be able to do this. And I know that's silly, but still. So I think as it stands now, we're talking about leaving here and actually doing the vacation part of it first, then going to his sister's. And it looks like we're going to be spending most of our time in Colorado. Um, we're still weighing what parts of Colorado we want to do. I'm leaning more towards staying in the southern half of the state. He kind of thinks it would be cool to go up to Rocky Mountain National Park. He's been there before. He's like, the elk will be in rut then. And it's like, okay. <laughs> But there's so many things in the southern part of the state, too, that I think would be awesome to see. And then there's some things in Arizona that we want to see. Um, I don't know if we're going to try to get New Mexico in there, too, or not. I don't know. But that's as far west as we're going to get on this trip, unfortunately. But I think it'll still be fun. And it will be better to be able to be slower and actually, like, see things. Because that was the other thing. Like, we were mapping it out to do the big route. And we could probably do it, but we wouldn't have time to actually stop and do anything. We'd just be riding all the time, which is not at all the point. So we're still planning, but I'll keep you posted. Um, but that's how things stand at the moment. Um, I don't think I have anything else for 10% this week. Um, so that moves us into shop news. I already mentioned about the A Merry Month of Minis video that I did. So you can get all those details there. Or you can go to the shop. The listing is up. All the information about that is up there. The pre-orders will go live on Sunday, July 1st at 9 a.m. And I will be leaving the pre-orders up through July 15th or until they sell out because I am only offering like a limited number of them this year. Um, that was one of my learning experiences last year. I have to put a limit on it because they're pretty labor intensive and time consuming. So in order to not make myself crazy this year, I have to have a cap on it. Um, but anyway, there's quite a number of them available. So hopefully if you want one, you'll be able to get one. But again, they will be going up live on Sunday at 9 a.m. for the pre-orders. They, I'm planning to have them shipped out by November 9th, which is a week later than I did last year, but it's still plenty of time um, for you to get them if you're gonna start using them December 1st. Um, this year, one of the big differences is I'm only doing all yarn or all fiber. I'm not doing the yarn and fiber combo set. Um, not many people purchased that last year, and um, so I just eliminated that one this year. Um, instead of, you know, just one less option, but you still have two options. Um, I'm not going to go through all of the differences. There are, there are some things that will be different this year. And again, like I said, I, I hope they're better. And, and you'll be getting seven additional minis this year, um, which will be cool. And there's going to be extras this year, too, in some of the daily packages. So I think that'll be a lot of fun. Okay, so you can look at that or read that on um, as you would like to. I also want to remind you I'll be vending. My last show of this first half of this year um, for my spring and summer show season is coming up 
on July 14th, which is a Saturday, and it's out here in Harrison City, which is quite close to me in southwestern PA. And that is the Gypsy Stardust Yarn and Fiber Festival. So that is the 14th, and it'll be from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., yes. And that's at the Harrison Room in Harrison City. So it's going to be wonderful. There are a ton more vendors this year. Um, I'm really looking forward to that. So please come on out if you're in the area. <clears throat> Sorry, I need to take it. <laughs> I'm just all froggy. Um... Oh, I got a whole bunch of new fiber. I think I alluded to this last week. Well, I bought a, I ordered a bunch of fiber, like fibers that I've carried in the shop before, um, you know, my usual lineup. But I recently ordered some new and exciting and very different fibers, and that order came yesterday. I cannot wait to start dyeing that. Um, hopefully, maybe by the next time I record, I'll have a little bit more that I can share with you about that. But just know that that's going to be coming soon. Um, so I, I'm looking forward to that. And hopefully, I'll have it up in the shop so that if you do want to do it during our spin along in July, you'll be able to grab some of it. And lastly, like I keep reminding you, don't forget about the Conversion Rewards Program. If you are knitting with Fiber Nymph Dye Works yarn this year, or spinning the fiber, or knitting from your spun fiber that you've spun prior, it has to be spun prior to this year. Um, you can keep track of your grams used and put it in the Conversion Rewards Program finished object thread, and you can earn new yarn or fiber. Um, I, I sent out a few more rewards this week to people, which was very fun for me to do, and hopefully they will enjoy it. So yeah, check that out. All that information is in the Fiber Nymph Dye Works group on Ravelry. All right, I can hear my dog barking. She wants in, and it's now raining, but I think she's actually downstairs, which means I have to go carry her up because she doesn't do stairs. <laughs> um, anyway, so I'm going to go. I will talk to you again next week. And if you have questions about anything I talked about in this episode, as always, feel free to email me at fibernymph at gmail.com or you can PM me on Ravelry or you can um, ask in the episode thread or in the YouTube comments. I'm trying to be really good about you know responding to stuff like that. Um, the only thing I would ask is if you have something shop related or you want to do a special order for yarn or anything like that, anything shop related, please do not post it anywhere except through an email to me. Um, it's just I can't keep track of them and I can't guarantee that I'll be able to get back to you. So email me or if you're wanting to do a special order, go to the shop and use the special order link, the custom order link, um, because there's a form that you can fill out on there to request your cut. Mm, excuse me, request your special order. That's the best, best two ways to go about that. All right, I think that's everything. Wow, it's really raining now. <laughs> I'm going to go, and I will talk to you soon. Oh, oh, last thing, the, um, the June Happy Hour Yarn Club shipments are going out Saturday. They will be in the mail to you Saturday morning, so you can watch for that. And this has been such a fun um, club to do. I've really enjoyed it. We could probably do several more rounds of happy hour, frankly. But anyway, this is the last one for this round. And I just wanted to let you know those are going out. All right. All done now. Talk to you later. Bye.